Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. We are going into meteorology now, just finishing up the energy part of this unit and a lot of the terms and concepts there in energy are going to carry over now into meteorology. Here are some weather statistics across the United States that you might want to be familiar with. You're not, you don't have to commit them to memory, but they're definitely pretty interesting. Some things like the hottest in Death Valley, California, over 100 or about 134 degrees Fahrenheit. Coldest, Prospect Creek uh, Camp in Alaska, negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, wettest in Hawaii, 460 inches of rain in one month. Actually, right now in Long Island, I think we're a couple inches down from normal, and I think we get around 10 inches of rainfall uh, roughly around this time of year. And California has gotten, I mean, sorry, Hawaii, 460 inches of one in one month. Pretty amazing. Snowiest in California, 390 inches of snow for a month. Driest in uh, Baghdad, California. Once again, another California place. 767 days without rain. Okay. And windiest, we're looking at a Mount Washington, New Hampshire, just a little north of us, uh, with the highest winds recorded at 231 miles per hour. Those are well over hurricane force winds, and you're looking at winds uh, that we typically see in tornadoes. So there are definitely... And within the United States, many uh, a huge number of extremes from coldest to hottest, snowiest and driest and windiest. It's actually pretty amazing. Okay, so what is the difference between weather and climate? We commonly hear these terms being used. And um, here we have a little definition for it. Weather is our short-term conditions of the atmosphere. Okay, daily differences in temperature, moisture, air pressure, and wind, along with a couple other variables. So you're looking, they can change from hour to hour, um, day to day, and season to season. Climate, on the other hand, is our long-term conditions. What's our climate been like for the past two years, three years, or over the past 10 years? So weather is our short-term, climate is our long-term conditions. One of the first weather variables that we're going to be looking at is humidity. Humidity is the moisture content in the air. We can look at humidity in a couple of different ways. The first way we're going to be looking at is the absolute humidity. Absolute humidity is the actual amount of water vapor in the air. It's a measured amount. So for our example, okay, the parcel of air has 10 grams of water vapor. What we can look at, a parcel of air is like a block of air. So there's our parcel, and this would have 10 grams of water vapor in it. So if the parcel of air changes, possibly the amount of water vapor in that or the amount changes. We don't really use absolute humidity too much, only because it doesn't give us a, a real feel of the actual weather condition. It can be useful in some situations, but it doesn't really help us. More commonly, we look at relative humidity. Okay. Relative humidity is the percentage of saturation of the air. Okay, so what do we mean? Okay, so 50% humidity means that the air is holding half of the water it is capable of holding. Okay, 100% humidity. Humidity is when the air is holding all the water vapor it can possibly hold, or the air is fully saturated. So in 100% relative humidity, the air is fully saturated. Okay. So once again, 100% humidity means that the air is fully saturated. Try to stick that to memory. That's not going to show up in your reference table. What is relative humidity again? Relative humidity is the percentage of water vapor in the air. So if we look at this parcel, parcel A, as being, we'll say it's 100 grams. And you can see that the dark blue spot right here is our water. Suppose we have 50 grams of water in this parcel of air, that's 100 grams. So if we do the percent, which would be 50 grams over 100 grams, you get 50%. On parcel B, parcel looks about the same, 100 grams, but now our dark blue region has increased it's more. We'll, we'll say this is about 80 grams of water. So now parcel B, we could do the percentage, 80 over 100 grams to get our 80%. So 
So parcel B is filled with more water. So when it's filled with more water, the relative humidity goes up. We can also look at relative humidity and the chance of rain. We have two screencasts, uh, screenshots right here. And we can see local weather in Chicago, 73 degrees. And looking down through, you can see that there's some rain appearing. Same thing, we could look at the hourly thing, Tuesday, 72 degrees um, for the highs and lows, but we also see rain. There is a correlation between relative humidity and rain. As the relative humidity increases, the chance of precipitation also increases. And that would have a tendency to make sense. As there's more water vapor in the air, we potentially could have more rainfall. An example would be 90% uh, humidity, relative humidity, very high chance of rain. Another term we're going to have to be familiar with is the dew point. The dew point is the temperature at which air is holding the maximum amount of water vapor it can hold. So for instance, if maybe the dew point temperature is 12 degrees Celsius and the air temperature reaches 12 degrees Celsius, the air will now become fully saturated and the air temperature has reached its dew point. It cannot hold any more water. This image down here in the bottom, we often associate like during the summer, we see dew on the grass. What happens is, is at the night, during the night, the temperature is dropped, making the air more saturated and the water ended up condensing on the grass. Like I said earlier, the dew point temperature is at which air is fully saturated and can hold no more moisture. We can find that dew point temperature using what's called a sling psychrometer. The sling psychrometer looks like this device right here. It's got a little handle and it's got two thermometers on it. It's got a wet bulb and this one, a dry bulb. The wet bulb is like it says, this little cotton gauze gets wet and then we take this and we sling the whole thing around. And what ends up happening is by finding the differences in the temperature between the wet bulb and dry bulb, we're actually able to find the dew point temperature using a chart that's in our reference table. Here's a little cartoon. So we have the temperature, 53 degrees. Our dew point temperature is 51. And this is our parcel of air right here. And notice there, something in the air saying, we're almost there. Temperature drops, it's going down from 53 to 52 degrees. Dew point temperature, notice it stays the same. We're getting ready. And then finally, when the air, te when the temperature reaches our dew point temperature, let's do it. It begins to rain. So here, as our air temperature reaches our dew point temperature, relative humidity humidity is increasing and here it finally increased so much the air became saturated and it rained if we open up our reference table we can find our dew point and relative humidity chart the dew point and relative humidity chart is used with the sling psychrometer remember the sling psychrometer has a wet bulb and a dry bulb from the difference between our wet bulb and dry bulb, right here on the top, okay, difference means we subtract wet minus dry, and using our dry bulb temperature on the, from the sling psychrometer, which is the same as your air temperature, we're able to find our dew point and relative humidity. So an example would be, what is the dew point temperature if the dry bulb is 12 degrees Celsius and the wet bulb is five degrees Celsius? Well, first we go to the left side and we find our dry bulb temperature or our air temperature. Then what we need to do is we need to find the difference between our wet bulb and our dry bulb. So 12 minus five equals seven. So we go up to the top, we find seven, and where the two numbers meet, is our dew point temperature. So here, dew point is negative five. Done, pretty easy. We can do the same exact thing to find our relative humidity. Using the sling psychrometer, we can also find the uh, relative humidity. We can do the same exact procedure we did before. 
So we know we need to know our dry bulb and we need to know our wet bulb. So we go to the left side, look for our dry bulb temperature of six degrees Celsius. Then we need to find the difference between the wet bulb and dry bulb. Six minus three equals three. Find three on the top. And we're gonna move down to where we both hit. And there you go, 59%. Same exact procedure for using dew point and relative humidity. All right, we're gonna stop here for this screencast. We've covered a lot between relative humidity and using the sling psychrometer with the relative humidity dew point charts. Next time we start, we're gonna go into air pressure.